If you have a calling, there is something that God has packaged into you. There is something that God has put together into your structure that is supposed to confirm your calling. That's supposed to confirm your 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 anointing, your your mission, and your mandate from God. Everybody that God has given a mandate to, there is a sign that conf that goes with that mandate. Everybody that has a calling, there is a mark upon that calling. Everyone that is that that is responsive to the to the to, to the calling of God, to the to the to the to the you no know, to the mandate of God, actually has some supernatural, some unique, some unique giftings that are in them to help them to distinguish them from the rest of the people this gift this mark these signs are to distinguish you from ordinary people and they want to 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 separate you to make you you know remarkable to make you extraordinary to make you more than you know ordinary an ordinary person so that you'll be able to you know to carry out the assignment God, when he, 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 when he tasks you with any assignment, when God asks you to do something for him, he does not just throw you in the water and tell you to swim anyhow you can, <laughs> if you can or you can't. God uh, releases you uh, and releases you already equipped. So there is always a mark and there is always a sign that God gives to follow those people he calls. And um, you, you might not notice it, but really, God does not send you on a mission without giving you some supernatural confirmation, some sign from heaven, some uh, mark upon your life to let you know that he is with you. And, uh, you know, sometimes we think, we used to think that the signs are some, some, some mysterious, out of something mysterious or something celestial or something like mystical. It doesn't have to be mystical. It could look ordinary to you, but really it might be the very same thing that God wants to use to be your sign, to be your key, and the, to be your tool of bringing his kingdom to the earth. And uh, let's, the, 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 the example I've been using this week is the example of Moses. And so let's look at the life of Moses. You remember the story? When Moses was called by God, he gave him a sign. He gave him a mark. And that sign, that mark, was something very, you know, ordinary. But it was the staff. It was in the staff, the rod of in the hand of Moses. So that rod, we know that through that rod and with that rod, it performed incredible stuff. It did miracles. It parted rivers, ocean, sea, and uh, it brought plagues upon the whole, whole nation. It, 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 marveled, it marveled all country, all people. He changed, you know, the mentality of a whole nation. He set people free. He liberated a whole nation from, from, from bondage. He, 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 he perplexed a whole country. He brought Egypt to his knee. Just through that tool that he had in his hand, through that mark, through that sign of the saints. So the message of today is the sign of the saints or the mark of the saint. If you are sent by God, God does not leave you to fight for yourself. <laughs> no, no. If you are sent by God, God has prepared an in-depth mark for you. Now, but the thing with us sometimes is that, like for example, let me talk about myself. Let me talk about myself. When I began to realize that God was calling me into the ministry, I began to say, well, I'm not going to go into this ministry. I'm not going to... I uh, uh, obey this ministry. I'm not going to, you know, step out if I don't have the assurance that God is with me. I needed an assurance. And each time I read this scripture about Moses, I was saying, well, God, you gave Moses the rod. Moses have the rod. Where is my own rod? And even in some, in some denomination, you have people actually carrying physical rod. <laughs> or in some, they might carry physical rod or they might carry water or they might carry bottle of water. Some people carry handkerchief. Some people you know, pour Ibina on each other. All kind of things that people use as their miracle working power. And <laughs> so people associate their calling with something. And you know, sometimes when we, you know, when we take that kind of thing, that kind of sign or mark to be literally, when we take them literally, like like the rod, like the staff in the hand of Moses, 
we the, the problem we have in that case, the, the tendency is for us to begin to think that whatever sign God is going to give to us or whatever mark is going to give to us has to be physical as well. That is a problem. When we begin to think that, okay, most, Moses had a physical mark, he had a physical sign that God was with him. I mean, you could see it. You know, we always, for us as humans, it's always easier for us when we see something with our own eyes. Then, when God is telling you, but you already have it, I say, where is it? I can't find it. That's why we have a tendency of going to look for something to symbolize that the fact that God is with us. So, some people look for anchorship, some people look for uh, staff also, some people look for candles even. So There might be different things that we use to symbolize the fact that, yeah, I want to know that God is with me. And, and that is a problem. That's a problem right there. Because in my case, I started telling my own story. That when God, were, when I, was, I was a 19-year-old kid. I was, I was young. Even before I was, a kid, before I was uh, called into the ministry. Just reading that story from childhood. I've been thinking, wow, that Moses was lucky. He was lucky. I mean, he had a sign. He had something done. He, I mean, if I had a sign like that, oh, wow, I'm going to wow this whole country. I'm going to go everywhere. <laughs> I'm just going to perform miracles left and right. I mean, if you have me, I mean, I just needed to have the stick. stick. I just needed the rod. I mean, if I show with my rod, you try not to, you try not to obey me. You try to disobey. I don't, I don't want to know you. I'm just going to perform miracles and make things happen. That's all. I mean, if I have the rod, <laughs> the rest is simple. You know, sometimes that's exactly what we are waiting for today. And some people don't want to step out into their callings before they are, because they are waiting for some physical confirmation, for some physical sign, or for some physical mark that God is with them. Is that what you are waiting for? Are you one of those people that, that is really waiting for something physical to be manifested, to be revealed to you before you could believe that you are being called? And you see, the, don't, don't think that the calling of, uh, of, most, of Moses was only, only spiritual. His calling was not just spiritual. Moses' calling was both spiritual as a pastor. He was a shepherd of Israel. But he was not just a pastor. He was a political leader. Moses' calling was secular as well as spiritual. This is a symbol of every one of us. We, we, not all of us are called to fivefold ministry. Not all of us are called to have spiritual ministry in the sense of being in the four walls of the church, the church ministry. But all our ministries are spiritual. There are some of us that are called to the world of media. And that is a calling as well. And you do, if you are called to the world of media, you want to come with your rod? Hmm? You want to come to the office and say, I come well, yeah, I come on live television show with my rod. Now this is the no no you, if you do that it will be too mystical people will be running away from you and you know that, that you know, so that, that kind of tells you that hey maybe the sign doesn't have to be something physical after all but okay for example let's say you are called to the world of medicine and then you'll be carrying the rod everywhere to the medical uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to do surgery so they are going to think they are going to kick you out of there you know so you don't want to you know they, maybe your sign does it would. And everybody's sign doesn't have to be physical. And maybe some of you are caught to the world of politics. Then you come and show up in the parliament and raise you. <laughs> and raise your only water and pour people. People will just beat you. They will beat the hell out of you. You know. <laughs> so it doesn't have always have to be physical. Our calling or something. So our calling has different kind of dimensions. So we are not all called to be Moses in the sense that we are all called to be Moses in our in the spiritual dimension of it. You are called to be a deliverer like Moses to one's fear of life. Don't ever think that your calling has to be in church. Don't ever think that God has, has to call you to the pulpit. Only 2% of people are called to the pulpit. 98% of the rest of the people are called to the world. It is the world that we need to change. It is the world that we must transform. It is the world that we need to return to God. The church is already in the hand of God. But we need to subdue the world back to God. It is the earth that was lost. And the earth that is in the hand of Satan. It is what is, is in the hand of Satan that must be reclaimed back. It is what is in the hand of Satan that we must restore and return back to Almighty God. 
forward. Hallelujah. It is the things that Satan has taken over. It is what Satan has usurped from the hand of Adam and Eve that we, the, the products of the second Adam, are now supposed to claim back to God. And that's why we have the callings that we have. And you don't need to wait for some uh, for, for, for some bush burning with fire for you to know that you are called. All of us have been called by God. And you don't need to wait for some supernatural thing and say, okay, I, I, I have my tree or my staff or I have my rod. You know, you, there is a sign upon your life anyway, even if you don't have a physical rod. But you are called for somewhere. Some, some of you are called to undo the political world and repair and restore the political world of your country. If you are feeling some burden for politics of your land, if you are feeling pain, heart pain, if you are feeling, you know, burden, if you are feeling passion for the politics of your land, embrace the calling. And believe God for it that you will become the Moses of your nation for in the world of politics. You will become the deliverer of the political sphere of your life. If you are feeling some concerns and some passion and some burden for the world of industry and you want your country to experience industrialization, go for it. But you will not go with a sword. You will not go with some bottle of oil to get technology to come. Bottle of oil will not bring technology. And the rod will not bring technology as well. But brain will bring technology. So there are, there are different things that we have as confirmation. The, that there are different ways for God to show you that he has given you his, his confirmation that you have been called. There are different ways God will use to show you that his hand is upon you. So the sword is just, I mean, sorry, the, the rod is just a sign, a way by which God wanted to make Moses to realize that he is with him. Just for him not to forget. Just for him not to lose his focus. Just for him not to doubt the fact that God is with him. Just for him to live in that awareness and to always remind himself that God is with him. That's why he had this symbolic presence of God with him. Symbolic, you no know, symbolism of the fact that God's anointing is on him. But today, it is not going to be the same for us anymore. Because in the Old Testament, God did not come to live inside people. He did not come to live inside their heart. But today, God through the Holy Spirit, and it comes to live inside us. So we don't need physical thing anymore. The only thing the people had in the Old Testament was that the people that were called by God, who were anointed by God, they had God with them. God was with them, but God was not in them. It was only through the time of Jesus and after Jesus that God began to come to dwell in people. And to also be with us. In that day, he says, you will know that I am in you. And you are in me. And I am with you to the end of the earth. God is with us. But he's not just with us. That's the good news. But now God is in us. And since God is in us, which is more superior, which is much more stronger than God being with us, then the science, the nature of the science will be a little bit different. The nature of the science will be a little bit different. If it's something that is with us, then we might need to see it. We might need something physical. Because it's just with you. You want to see what is with you. But when it's in you, then it shows that goes a long way to tell us that most of the science now in the, old, in the New Testament will be from inside. The science now in the old, in New Testament will be from inside. Not something that you see outside that is with you, but something that you will feel inside. Something that is inside of you. Something that is internal. And because it is internal, don't look for it outside again. Don't look for it in swords. Don't look for it in rods. Don't look for it in holy water. Don't look for it in Ribena. Don't look for it in some physical things. If you want, you could still do that. Maybe for to encourage some people's faith. But that is not the thing that's going to do the work. That is not the sign. That is not what's going to do the work. That is not the mark. And that is not the sign. The sign will come from within. The sign will be something spiritual. The sign will be something invisible. The sign will be something that you must have faith in. The sign will be something that you must know that you know. The sign will be something that you already have that you, you, maybe you are not aware of. So in my own case, 
the mark of the saints. Yes, in my own case, when I was 19, when God uh, visited me and I realized that God was calling me, and I was thinking, wow. And I, I started thinking about this raw thing, you know, since I was a young person, maybe, you know, since primary school. <laughs> I was been thinking that, okay, this guy had a rod. What will I have? Interesting. What will I have, by the way? What will, and uh, I was thinking, what, what would God use, use, use to, to use, you know, to use to confirm? And what will I use to do miracles? I remember I was in the village. I was growing up in the village. And we have some white garment, uh, white garment, whatever, priest or pastors or whatever you call them. They would come from town. They would come from Ijebode. I was living in a small village of Domila. And they would come from Ijebode and uh, f five o'clock in the morning, you can't believe it. <laughs> Everybody was sleeping. But these guys would come with a bell, you know, some bell. And begin to, you know, you bang the bell and ring the good, 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 good. <laughs> early in the morning, waking you up, you know, disturbing your sleep. And they would be preaching the gospel that way. And, you know, we wonder, why the bell? Why the bell? And, um, you know, so they have all kinds of explanations. Well, I was looking at that as a small kid as their own sign. Yeah, these people have a sign. They've got a bell. They've got a bell. Then some people will go in white garments. Some people will go sh without even shoes or something like that. You know, all kinds of things people were doing. And they were thinking that the supernatural power of God will come through these things. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Now, we need to spread this word and we need to do it together. For that to happen, we need your help. Just five little steps that you could help us to spread the word. Number one thing we need you to do is to like the videos. Please go like this video right now. Number two, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Number three, we need you to press and click on that notification bell. You see the bell? Go press on it. And number four, we need you to go comment. Write your comment, good or bad, just write what you feel. Number five, share, share, share. Share on every platform. Share on Instagram, share on Facebook. Just share and spread the word. Thank you so much. All right, blessings.